We review some of the directions for us as a local church in 2018. Also shared are some important insights from John chapter 15 verses 1 to 8. So let's rise up to our feet this morning, please, and let's make our declaration. If you brought your Bible, you're most welcome to hold your Bible high up in the air. Let's say this out loud, bold and strong. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a child of his blessing. To many people, I receive his word. I believe his word. And I live by his word. Christ is my master. And to him, I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Why don't you turn around to people around you, in front of you, behind you. Shake hands. Give them a good smile. Say hello. Tell them you're happy to see them here this morning. And you may be seated, please. I'd like to just share one testimony before we get into the message or get into what we want to share this morning. Uh, as you can go ahead and collect those uh, white portions back. So young people, those who've got this card, you just please hand it back. Raise your hand, wave it so they know they'll come and collect it from you. Uh, you know, in our North Church, we have a lot of uh, students who've come who are from Africa. So over the years, we've had a lot of students, uh, especially in our North Church. They have studied in colleges in that area. They've been part of uh, the church. And then many of them finish the studies and go back to uh, the country they came from. And so we received an email from a young man named Paul Mukwaya. He's from Kampala, Uganda. So he was part of a North Church for, I think, I forget exactly, maybe three, maximum five years. He was there while he was studying. So he's back now uh, in Kampala. And he sent this email. He, and I just thought it was nice just to share, you know, what God has done in his life. So they, these students, they come there with us for a brief period of time, maybe three years, sometimes five years. And just to know that, you know, us being a church family around them blesses them. So here's what he sent. This email came back, uh, came to us on the 3rd of Jan, uh, and he does the introduction part. He says, I just want to let you know I'm happily married now. Uh, he got married on the 11th of November last year. And uh, he says this. He says, I want to thank uh, the APC, the th thank the church, for the spiritual impact you've had on my life. The discipleship I got from APC is what has kept me moving thus far. Those opportunities to volunteer and serve at church were to eventually prepare me for ministry. And as much as I strongly desire to be a part of the hospital missions and other missions uh, elsewhere in North India with APC, the Lord had a different plan. He returned me home and two years ago he called me to evangelism. I was appointed the head of, of, uh, of the school of missions team in my local church. Uh, so he goes to uh, a church called Victory Fellowship International in Uganda. And he says, through this ministry that involves visiting schools, I witnessed the power of the Holy Spirit. Through so the numerous schools, colleges, and other institutions of learning that I and the rest of the team I lead have visited periodically. I've seen lives transformed, souls won, and miracles happen. And in 2018, we're going to continue carrying the gospel forward. This is what he says. He says, the teachings he's received here at APC... Uh, uh, and the various publications, he downloads them and he uh, reads them often. Uh, he talks about the publication, Timeless Principles, has blessed me tremendously. He says, as a businessman and a professional, I need such underlying values and principles from the word of God on which to build my professional life. So he says, greetings uh, to the whole church family and all the locations uh, from here in Kampala. Amen. So just to know that this young man... Spend some time here with us. And I forget how many years exactly. But some, God did something in his life that he could go back to his home country and serve the Lord. And of course, he's working, but he's also serving. You know, what he mentions is these opportunities to volunteer at church really helped him. Amen? So you know what I'm getting at now. 
<laughs> there are plenty of opportunities to volunteer. Get involved. Amen? I mean, in addition to all that we learn through the ministry of the word and the spirit and so on, hey, get involved. Uh, uh, just serve in whatever way you can. And I remember Paul, uh, you know, those, he, he was serving, of course, in our North Church and just helping out in different areas. Uh, uh, he had a life group. He was one of the ushers there. And, and just being involved just blessed his life. And today he's able to be a blessing uh, back in his own country. I just thought it would be nice to share that. What we usually do on the first Sunday of each year uh, it's just to, we call it, the sermon has the same title. We change the year every time. It's called The Road Ahead, right? So now it's The Road Ahead 2018. So basically what we do is take time uh, to just share with us a little bit on the direction for the church. So I'm going to do three things today very quickly. First, I'm going to review the word of the Lord for us as a church family, as a local church. So you know, in New Year's Eve service, we, all, we bring a word uh, uh, to us, uh, something that God would want to speak to us as a local church and what we need to do, focus areas uh, for the year. And as we emphasize each time we bring the word of the Lord, it's not the only thing God is speaking. We live by the word of God, right? So we've got to read the entirety of the Bible. So don't just take this one verse and say, this is the only verse I read the whole year. <laughs> That's not the point. You've got to read the whole word of God. Uh, but this is one of the focus areas that we do. So I'll re review the word of the Lord for the benefit of those of us who missed it. Then I want to briefly share about some of the focus areas of us as a local church. Uh, this past week, many of you uh, would have already received the calendar for the year. Uh, that's about 90% done. We still have a few things here and there that we'll add. And, you know, uh, we weren't certain about the dates, so we'll do those updates. But essentially, uh, that has most of what we're planning to do uh, for the year. And we've sent that out to uh, those of us uh, uh, who are on the, on, on the, on the uh, email list. And then uh, the third thing I would like to do just this morning is to close with a short message from the Word. So the first two are more commercial, all right? So just bear with me. They're not commercial. I should, shouldn't say commercial. They're more uh, uh, strategic, more organizational. And then there comes the message. And I'm not asking for money here, so it's not commercial. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's review the Word of the Lord for us as a local church family. Uh, we brought that from Isaiah, the 58th chapter, the 12th verse. Uh, I'm reading from the Good News Bible, and the Lord speaks to his people. He says, your people will rebuild what has long been in ruins, building again on the old foundations. You will be known as the people who rebuilt the walls, who restored the ruined houses. So I understand Isaiah 58 is a chapter that's talking about the chosen fast. And in the middle of that chapter, along that, in that chapter, God is talking about what his people will do. So here's a picture of a city uh, whose houses have been brought down. The city is in ruins. But the foundations are good. The foundations are strong. Just that the buildings have been brought to ruin for whatever reason. And God is saying, my people will rebuild that which is in ruins. So the word of the Lord for us this year was to build again on old foundations. So there may be areas in our lives, maybe one, maybe two, maybe several, areas in our lives that have gone into ruins, so to speak. Meaning, there were things that were doing well, but for some reason they've declined, they've been torn down, they've been abandoned, they've been dismantled. And this year, we build again on those old foundations. The foundations are good. Just build on it again. We're going to see it rebuilt, restored, revived, repaired, raised up once again. Build again on old foundations. So, uh, so the twofold promise is this, that you will see things raised up, brought back into their original state of glory and even better. Because God always does better. The same, you know, when he does it again, he does it better. The glory of the latter house will always be greater than that of the former. So you will see greater glory in those areas that, uh, that seem to have gone into ruins. And not only that, but you will be known as a people. You will have a reputation. You will have a name. Others will seek you out because there is a grace on your life to rebuild. There's a grace on your life to restore. There's a great grace on your life to repair what's ruined in other people's lives. Amen? So this is what we want to do this year. And uh, there are, you, know, you can apply this 
in one or more areas of your life. God is calling us to raise up, restore, build again on the old foundations. So what has been laid in ruins will be rebuilt, restored, uh, raised up to the original state of glory and even better. So you can apply this in several areas of your life, whether it's your personal walk with God. For some of us, you know, that's an area you say, God, yeah, I know. Two years ago, I was doing really well. But maybe last year, things declined a bit. Hey, rebuild, build again on old foundations. Maybe your personal life. Maybe your marriage, your family. Uh, you say, well, maybe for some of us, you know, things in that area may not be so well, so good. Well, don't give up. Don't walk away from it just because things are difficult or bad. Rebuild. Build again on old foundations. You know, in Isaiah, we also saw this in Isaiah 61 and verse 4. It talks about the anointing of the Holy Spirit that causes us to be such people who will repair, rebuild, restore, raise up. It's the Spirit of God who will empower you and me to do that. So don't walk away. It could be our professional lives or our businesses. For some of us, you know, maybe things have gone that way, gone south last year. But this year you say, God, I want to build again on old foundations. I'm going to see them restored. I'm going to see them raised up. For us, as a, in the life of us, uh, us as a local church, we want to continue our emphasis on the Word of God and the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit. And then you keep hearing this over and over again. For us as a local church, this is so important. What are the foundations on which the church in the book of Acts was built? It wasn't on PowerPoint slides. Amen. Sure, preacher, use the PowerPoint if you want to. <laughs> That's just an add-on, but that's not the focus. Amen? It wasn't on great worship teams. Thank God for all those who serve on our worship team. But it wasn't on any of these add-ons, these, these props that we have in church. The only church, if you look back in the, in the New Testament, all they had was the entirety of the Old Testament scripture. They had the four gospels because the apostles taught them everything they heard and saw Jesus do. So they had that. And then, of course, in due time, they had the epistles written to them for them by the apostles. They had God's word, and they had the working of the Holy Spirit. And that was how the early church was raised. Amen? So, we're not against using all the tools that we have. Use it. But those tools will not take primary importance amongst us. We've got to stay with the word of God and the work of the Holy Spirit. That's it. So, build on those foundations. And use whatever tools you want, but don't let the tools take the center stage. Stay with the word. So we're going to do that. And we want to be an expression of the book of Acts in our day, in our time. Amen? We want to be an expression of that in our day, our time. Of course, the context is different. It's Bangalore City, not Jerusalem. Or, or the Middle East. The context is different. I understand that. But the Holy Spirit hasn't changed and God's word is still the same. Amen? So in our day, in our time... God, we want to see, be a book of Acts expression here in our city. And so that's for us in our church and then same thing in our ministry to others. God will use you to reach out to people uh, whose lives in some areas are in ruin, broken down, torn down. And you step in as, uh, as a person with the anointed by the Holy Spirit, uh, given the grace to rebuild, restore, repair, raise up in their lives. Amen. So you find out areas that God wants to use you. And you step in there and bless others and in our ministry to others. That was the first part. Second part, some of the focus areas of 2018. Uh, one of the ways that we work here at, at, at church, and many of those of you have been with us, you realize this, that we try, we try to plan for the whole year in advance. Right? So uh, uh, we, we like to do that. That's the way we function and, uh, and I just call it spirit-inspired planning. Some people don't like it. They don't like that. That before the first Sunday of the year, we've decided what we're going to preach the whole of the year. We don't like, some people don't like that. Don't plan so much. But I call it spirit-inspired planning. Because, hey, if you can believe God to show you what he needs you to do that day, God is well able to show you what to do the rest of the days of the year. Amen. Because he knows the end from the beginning. So if you can listen to him for one day, you can listen to him for the remaining 364 days as well. Just listen to God. He's able to do that. And so I encourage, and we work that way as a church. And so I want to share some of these things, and the directions in which we are going. Now just to give you that what we're doing is very biblical. Second Corinthians chapter 1, 
verses 15 to 17, the apostle Paul writes these words. He's talking about his ministry travels. And here's what he says. In verse 15, he's writing to Corinthians. He says, in this confidence, I intended to come to you before that you might have a second benefit. So he's saying, look, I want to come to you a second time. I want to bless you again a second time. Uh, that's what he's writing to Corinthians. And he says in verse 16, to pass by you to Macedonia and to come again, again from Macedonia to you and be helped by you on my way to Judea. So he's sharing his plans. And this is what I planned to do. I wanted to come to you from there. I want to go to Macedonia. Then I want to return to Corinth. From Corinth, I want to go to Jerusalem. I want you to help me to get there and so on. And verse 17, therefore, when I was planning this, so did the apostle plan? So it's apostolic to do that. <laughs> Therefore, when I was planning this, did I do it lightly? Are the things I plan? So did he, have, did he plan? Yes. The things I plan, do I plan according to the flesh? That with me there should be yes, yes, and no, no. The inference here is Paul is saying, you know, when I was thinking about all this, I was doing it by the Holy I'm not doing it by the flesh. The things I plan. Do I plan by the flesh? No, 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 no. The obvious statement there is, you know, even as I plan or where I want to go, what I want to do, Paul is saying I'm doing it by the Holy Spirit. So we call it Spirit-inspired planning. So you listen to the Spirit of God. God, what do you want us to do? Where do you want us to go? Uh, how do you want us to serve in, the, in this year ahead of us? And then we like to put it out so that all our teams, or the worship team, the performing arts, everyone, the life group leaders, everyone's ready and we're all moving together uh, in sync. So here are some of the focus areas. Now we've sent some of this out by email already, but I'm just uh, uh, you know, speaking about it here in church. First one. Is through the year, we want to continue growing in God by growing in His Word and His Holy Spirit. So that journey will continue. We continue growing in God by growing in His Word, growing in the things of Spirit. Push in both areas. Advance. Move forward in both areas. In God's Word, in the things of the Spirit. Now some of the things that we will be doing in the Word of God, here are some of the key areas we'll be looking at. Uh, in the month of February, we'll spend a month here talking about lifestyle evangelism. That's a, 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 a series, a new series we'll do. Just to in, and equip us to share Christ with others. Uh, we'll spend a month talking about our, our redemption. We're revisiting that subject. It's not new. We've seen it before. But we want to address that. And we also especially answer, want to answer several questions that seem to come up uh, in this whole area of our redemption. And so we will address some of those questions that maybe are just moving around in the yeah, I'm talking uh, in, in the church in general. We're doing a brand new series on the holiness of God. You know, the Bible talks about the goodness and the severity of God. Right? Sometimes we emphasize only one half. Goodness. Hey, read the rest of the verse. Right? So there is both sides. Right? And so we want, to, we want to talk about the holiness of God. There is so much emphasis on the goodness of God in the church worldwide. That's good. But don't forget God is also holy. The goodness of God is not a license to live contrary to the holiness of God. And unfortunately, we don't keep that in perspective. And so we're doing this brand new series on the holiness of God just for us to explore the greatness of His holiness and how, what is our response to the holiness of God. I will spend two months going to the book of Romans. We like to do a book study every year or one or two books. This year we're going to go through Romans verse by verse, chapter by chapter, studying through that. Uh, Romans is one of the most important doctrinal uh, episodes, writings of the Apostle Paul. Uh, the other episodes talk about lifestyle, how we live as Christians, how we live as believers. But Romans deals with solid doctrine, what God has done for us in Christ. And so that's a very important book we'll study through. Uh, we'll revisit the subject of the kingdom of God, spend a month on it, just, just, uh, just you know, uh, re-energize us in that understanding, walking as kingdom people. I will spend two months talking about prayer intercession. Many of us are involved in prayer intercession, but we, need to, we want to take that a level up. You all with me so far? Right? So we want to move that up a level and learn how we as a people engage in prayer intercession uh, for others, for our city, for our nation. And we close up this year by a brand new series on live life the Jesus way. How do we live and model our lives after Christ himself? So... That's kind of the highlight of, 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 of the key messages series that we're going to do this year. Of course, in between, there will be guest speakers. There will be 
uh, you know, one-off messages here and there that will come through. But these are the main things we're going to cover in order for us to grow together in God's Word and in the things of the Spirit. A second very important focus area for us this year is outreach to our city. So tell a neighbor, time to wake up. Okay, we are going to step out and reach people in our city. That is so important. You know, we're here as a church and, you know, I think uh, we've, we've, the, our mindset has been, oh, we will gather together and others will just join us. You know, that doesn't always happen. The unsaved are not necessarily going to come to you and to the church just because we're gathering together. We've got to reach them. Amen? And so a major thrust this year for us as a congregation is to go out into the city. So last couple of weeks, we've been spending some time in Malaysia, that side, part of town, the west side of our city. I've been going and sitting in coffee days, just, just looking for people they could share, you know, share the gospel. Now, you know, giving out tracts is okay, but you, there's no guarantee they're going to read it. Jesus didn't say, go into all the world and give tracts. He said, go into all the world and share the gospel. You've got to speak the gospel. You've got to sit down and talk to them. You've got to share the gospel. Now, I'm not against tra uh, giving tracts. I'm not against doing, you know, through movies and films and all that. All oh, use every method. Fine. But at the end of the day, they've got to hear the gospel. They've got to hear about Jesus Christ. And so we want to mobilize you and me. And, and so what we are doing at each of our locations, we, the pastors are going out and experimenting. The pastors are going out and doing the stuff first. So we're doing, uh, uh, myself and Manor are out there in Malaysia. And we're doing that on that side. And the Nancy is up there in the north. They're going out looking at areas. Where can we go? Where can we mobilize the church? So we can actually go and connect with people and, uh, and share the gospel. Now, of course, you can do it right there in your workplace, in your community where you dwell, where you live. Start doing it. So uh, uh, as well as go intentionally to other places where people are available for us to speak and share Christ with them. Amen? So we're going to do that. It's going to be a, a focus area for us to just reach people. It's not that we've not done it before. We already have, you know, the Campus Elevates happening. Where we, we speak to thousands of students in, all, in colleges. We have a Catalyst happening. Where we speak to thousands of students in schools. So all of that, those things are already happening. But we need to do more to win people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that will be another focus area. We'll be training us in, in how to do that. Um, the calendar, APC 2018 calendar was already emailed and many of our regular things will continue. The kids camp, the youth camp in May, the church camp in November will continue. We'll have a one day women's conference, um, the men's conference, the marriage and family and Christian professionals. All those things will continue to the course of this year. Uh, our, our times of prayer, the secret place, the all night of prayer uh, that will happen twice a year. Uh, the five days of prayer that we do every six months that will continue. Uh, the additional thing that we're doing this year is worship nights. You just heard that announced today. Uh, what, uh, what, and this was Pastor Jake's idea. Uh, he said, you know, why don't we just spend some time where we only just worship. Just come and worship. That's it. So it's okay, let's try it out. Let's see if people respond to that. <laughs> so uh, every month, other than the months when we have Secret Place happening, Every month, we'll have this worship night. We're starting over two hours, just seven to nine. Uh, we'll do it alternate at, at our church office, and then next month, we'll do it at South, you know, because people are so far away, they're not able to come this side. So we'll alternate in terms of locations, but just two hours of worship. Just come and just be there and worship. If you have a lot of people showing up in the church office, then we will move location. We'll, go to, we'll come into an auditorium, but we just want to see if there are people who, who, who like to do this, just to come and be there for worship. And then we'll move to, you know, if, if there are a lot of people coming, we can just have it right here as well. As well. But just worship night. Just come, wait in God's presence, and everything will be spontaneous. So just for us to worship God, just be in His presence. So we're going to try that out. The third thing I just want to talk about, just a few more things here, is on weekend schools. I want to really encourage us, all of us, to attend these weekend schools. It happens on a Saturday, Sunday, throughout the year, every month. And... Uh, what we believe is that every believer is a minister. So tell your neighbor, turn to your neighbor and say, hello, reverence. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> right? 
We believe that every believer is a priest. Whether they call you reverend or not, pastor or not, it's not about the title. You are a minister of God. You're in the body of Christ for a function. You, you, you've got a ministry, something that God wants you to do, right? It's not about the title. It's not about position. You've got a role. God has given each one of us a role. You are a minister of God. If you're a believer, you're a, you're a minister of God. God wants to work in you and through you. And for that, we provide the equipping to get you ready, enable you uh, to minister. So that's what goes on through these weekend schools that happen throughout the year. This year, we're introducing two new weekend schools. One is on inner wholeness. Uh, there's, there's a great need there, and, and, and people are broken in the, in the realm of the soul, the mind, the emotions. And so there'll be that one weekend school on inner wholeness. There'll be another new school they'll be introducing on lifestyle evangelism. That means we want to continually equip people on how to share the gospel. We talk about it on Sundays, but we thought we'd put it in a school as well so that as new people join us, they can continually uh, be equipped in these areas. The other weekend schools will continue uh, as usual on prayer and intercession, the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, healing and deliverance and so on. We encourage you, if you've never attended a weekend school, to attend. In fact, attend all these schools and maybe attend all of them twice or thrice. <laughs> okay? So get really equipped. Ask all your questions. See, on Sunday morning, you can't ask questions. You can't clear your doubts. But in a weekend school, you can stop whoever is and ask questions and interact and, and, and you know, uh, have your doubts cleared. And, and we also have time for practice where you can actually do the stuff. Which, you know, we don't get to do on Sunday mornings. You know, we, you know, we just come, we listen, we worship, we go. But weekend schools are different. And, and they're really meant to equip people. So attend all of them. Fourthly, I want to talk about our missions. Uh, this year we're going to run two short-term Bible colleges. One in Nabrangpur, Orissa. Uh, so uh, Nabrangpur, uh, to get there you've got to fly or take the train or fly to Wysak. And then it's an eight-hour road through the Ghats. To go in there. So it's a strenuous journey. Those of you who are going, I'm warning you in advance. Uh, but we're going to run a three-week Bible school there in Nabrang, Purorissa. Uh, we'll probably have about 60 or more uh, people being trained there. That will happen from Feb to April. And then we'll run our uh, second one, which we've, we've been doing for the last three years in Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh. So that'll be another three-month Bible school. So we're extending our Bible school, short-term Bible school from 10 weeks to 12 weeks. And it will be running in these two places. The one in Varanasi will go from September to November. Those of you who like to go and minister, uh, you, please just get in touch with Diana. Or Diana will be reaching out to you if you'd like to give a week to go there and minister to uh, people in these areas. So the first one will be done in Oriya. The other one in Hindi. You speak in English. There will be a translator, interpreter to do that. Uh, we, we are also having several pastors conferences and youth conferences scheduled around the country. Uh, just some of the places that we're going to cover this year will be in Nagpur, uh, Sholapur, uh, both are in Maharashtra, they will be in Chandigarh, um, and we'll be in uh, Karnataka, we'll be covering three places, Balari, Chitradurga, and Mysore, then we go into Ranchi, then we go to Kathmandu, those of you who like to come to Kathmandu this year, mark those dates, if you can take a team and go there, that'll be great, uh, uh, we'll be in Dubai, we'll be in Kolkata, and Kohima. So these are places we're going to go uh, for pastors' conferences. Uh, but we're also doing three important youth camps. And, I, and, and this, I, I, all of us, I'd like to encourage, you know, those of you go on one or more of these missions. But these three youth camps I want to highlight. One will be in Pune in early part of May. Uh, the end of May will be in Gujarat. You remember Bishop Devadas was with us, I think, last year. I think last year, if, I, if I'm not wrong. So he invited us to come last year. We couldn't make it last year. I couldn't fit it in because the year was only planned. But so we said we'll do it this year. So end of May, we're going to his area in Gujarat where they, they've seen revival. They've seen lots of tribals come to faith in Christ. But now we're going to go there to serve them. We're going to go to equip them, right, to minister to them. So that will be happening end of May. So those of young people, those who like to go, and others as well, they like to go and serve, you can do that. And Kolkata, but Kolkata will be a city, so the nature of the work there will be different. We are reaching out to urban youth. So these were three youth-related camps that we're doing around, this, around the country. Others would like to go mark these dates and please go on these trips. So you can register for these online through our missions page. The last thing I want to talk about is uh, some of the facility projects. You know, we've started getting into doing small, small church construction here and there. Uh, and uh, I just want to talk, mention this, that we are considering, I'm saying considering because things have not been formalized yet, uh, on setting up a training center in Waranasi. So in December we went, we saw the land, we were 5,000 square feet. The whole idea is that if we have our own place, we can run these short-term Bible colleges 
three colleges. We can run three of these every year. Right now, we are doing a rented place. We are at their, you know, quote-unquote mercy in the sense if they give it to us, we can do it. If they say no, we can't. So we have our own place, and, and students are coming to us from all across North India. So last year, the batch we graduated in December, we had students, I think, from eight to ten different states from North India come and attend that. So it's, it's becoming a center, an easy uh, a place that they can all come. So our, our plan is to build up our own facility so we can run three batches every year and, and keep training people up in the north so that they can go out and, 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 and minister, you know, wherever they come from. They, can, they come from all across North India to be equipped. So that's where we're just still considering the, the, the background check is being done for the land. And if that works out, everything happens, we, will, we can proceed. Uh, but we'll keep you posted on that. The other thing is we're also continue looking for places, right, for our own locations here in Bangalore. That search will continue, and hopefully it'll happen before eternity comes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, the, rest of the, the rest of the things that we're doing uh, is all in our church calendar as well as on our church website, so please uh, use that to be informed. I want to close with a short message from God's Word. Tell your neighbor, here he is finally. John chapter 15. Let's spend some time in the word of God. Otherwise you'll say, I went to church and I didn't hear them say anything from the Bible. <laughs> John chapter 15 verses 1 to 8. We're going to spend a few moments in, these, in this passage before we dismiss this morning. John 15 verses 1 to 8 is a passage that's familiar to us. Let's read it. And I want to just share, highlight a few things. I am the true wine, Jesus is saying, and my father is the wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear what? More fruits. Verse 3, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Verse 4, abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the wine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the wine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears, what? Say that loud. Much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Verse 6. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will, what's the next word? Ask. You will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. All right, very quickly, a few insights here from this passage. The first one I want to just highlight for us is this. That God desires for us to be very fruitful and keep increasing in fruitfulness. So God wants you to be fruitful. Tell your neighbor, God wants you to be fruitful. It's God's desire. God wants us to be fruitful. You know, Jesus says, he uses this analogy. He says, I'm the wine, you're the branches, and my father is the wine dresser. What is the father looking for? What is the father trying to do? What is the father working on? He's trying to get all of us to bear? No. Bear much fruit. Not just fruit. Right? Because he says in verse 2, he says, you know, what's the father looking for? He says... Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes of every branch in me, uh, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more, more, more fruit. What's the father doing as a wine dresser? He's trying to get you and me to bear more fruit, much fruit. So God wants you and me to increase in fruitfulness. Amen. That's God's desire for you. So don't think that if you say, God, I want to be more fruitful in my life, that it's against God's nature. No. 
It's, it is aligned to God's desire for you and God's nature for you to become even more fruitful in your life. Now, what is fruit? What is the fruit he's referring to? Right? Now, of course, think about the analogy he's using. He's talking about a plant or a tree and that plant or tree is bearing fruit. So in that context, what is fruit? It is the expression of the working of that tree. That the tree is at work. You know, it's drawing its nutrients, or the plant is drawing its nutrients from the soil. It's doing its stuff. It's at work. And how do you know that that, that tree or the plant is doing well? It's working right. By the fruit. So what is fruit? Fruit is the expression of God's working in your life. That's it. How do we know God is working in your life? Look for the how do we know God's at work in your life? What do we look for? Fruits. What is fruit? It's the expression of God's working in your life. That God is working in you by his word. God is working in you by his Holy Spirit. And now that becomes evident to the fruit you and I bear. So what is fruit? It's the expression of God's working in your life. If I say God is working in me, but I don't have any fruit to show it, you have every right to question. You have every right to say, I'm not sure. <laughs> because I don't see the fruits. The only way you and I can tell God is at work is by the fruit. See the fruit. So fruit is an expression of God's working. His life is at work in me. It's an expression of his life in me. It's an expression of his working in me. People see it through the fruit that we bear. Now, I like to character, I like to talk about the fruit in these three components. The first two apply to all of us, are universal, meaning all of us as believers. The second one is very specific to us as individuals, the components of the fruit that we're supposed to bear. The first one is that all of us are supposed to increase in Christ-likeness. You agree with me? That's part of the fruit we are to bear in our lives. We are increasing in Christ's likeness. We're becoming more and more like Jesus. That's part of the fruit that we are supposed to bear. The people can see that. I say, yes, God is at work. His life is in you. I can see it because you're becoming more and more like Christ, like Jesus. That's for all believers. The second component of this fruit that it should manifest in our lives, and again, it applies to all of us as believers, is that we all should be doing the things Jesus told us to do. Amen? All of us. Whether uh, I, I may be the president of a company, whether I'm a school teacher, or I'm a, a soccer player, whatever my vocation in life is, it doesn't matter. We are all supposed to be doing the things Jesus told us to do, which is to win souls and make disciples. Amen? That's fruit. Win souls, make disciples. Fruit, bear fruit. Do the things he told us to do. The third one is in very specific to you and me, which is that you and I must be increasing or be fruitful in the assignment God has for our lives. So God has an assignment for each one of us. It's different, right? What he has for me may be different from what he has for you and what he has for the person next to you. That assignment is different for each one of us. But in the specific assignment that God has for each of us, we've got to bear fruit. We've got to keep growing, keep increasing. So when you look at fruit, Look at these three components. Am I becoming more like Jesus? Am I increasing in doing the things he wants me to do? Am I winning souls, making disciples? Am I having impact? Am I being salt and light in my city, in my nation? Am I doing that? And thirdly, am I growing the assignment he has for my life? The specific thing that he wants me to do. Am I increasing in it? But here's the good news. God wants you to increase. He wants you to bear fruits. He wants you to grow in these things. He's for you. And he's looking at ways and how to get you and me to become more fruitful. Second insight here is this. That pruning is necessary for greater fruitfulness in our lives. It's very quiet. Let me repeat it. Pruning is necessary for greater fruitfulness. It's necessary. Right? So what does he do? Every branch that bears fruit, he crowns with many crowns. No. Every branch that bears fruit, he, ouch, <laughs> he prunes. So you're bearing fruit. He says, great, I'll get you to bear more fruit. But in order for you to bear more fruit, I need to 
prune. That word prune there comes from the root word means to cleanse, to clean up, to purge, to clean. What is, what is cleaning? Get rid of all the dirt. And not only get rid of the dirt, get rid of all the unnecessary things. Now you know, you know uh, in your cupboard, if you have lots of clothes, you clean up. It means you give all the excess away. Right? So get rid of all the excess. Get rid of all the unnecessary. So there may be things in our lives that may not necessarily be sin, but they may be unnecessary. All things may be, all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable, is what the Apostle Paul wrote. That's okay. But is it profitable? Is it really benefiting you? Is it helping you or not? So maybe, so you and I need to pray, God, prune me so that I can bear more. Would you pray like that? God, prune me. I mean, show me the things that are not necessary in my life. Areas that need cleaning, that needs taking out, God. And God might speak to you and say, okay, I says, you're just talking too much. <laughs> I said, okay, God. Got a little loose tongue. I need to prune that. <laughs> or maybe he says, you know, you don't really need to sleep for 10 hours. Seven will do. I don't know, it's making this up, but, you know. So there's a little pruning that God brings. Hey, get that area of your life. It's, it's not a sin to sleep 10 hours, but you can do with less. And that additional two, three hours, do something useful. Pruning. Okay? So pruning is necessary. And you and I must be open. Ask the Lord, what are the areas of my life? I want to go into greater levels of fruitfulness. So what must I prune right now to go to that level of increased fruitfulness? Number three. One of the ways pruning or cleaning happens is by his word. In verse 2, he says, you know, for you to be more fruitful, you need to be pruned. And right then, right after that, verse 3, he says, you are clean. It's the same root, same, the, the Greek word comes with the same root word for verse 2 and verse 3. He says, you are, I, I need to prune you. Verse 3, you are pruned or you're cleaned by the word I've already spoken. So the word of God has pruning effect in our lives. The word of God has a cleansing, cleaning effect. And that's why it's so important to read God's word. Amen? Christian comics are okay for entertainment. But if you need pruning, you need the word of God. You need to read God's word, the Bible. Amen? Because you are pruned, you are cleaned through the word that I've spoken to you is what Jesus said. Now, for those disciples at that time, he had done it for them. But for you and me, he does it through his word today. When you and I open up his word and read it and say, God, show me in my life. The light, the light of God's word shines into those areas in our lives and exposes some of the dust that needs to be cleaned out. Some of the unnecessary things that we need to be removed. And we submit ourselves to the word of God. Pruning happens in our lives. And it brings us to a place of greater fruitfulness. So please, through the course of this year, take time to be in the word. Amen. Read God's word. Study it. Meditate it. And let him work in you by his word. Number four. The key to fruitfulness is intimacy. He put it like this in verse five. He said, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. So you abide in me and I in you, I abide in you, you will bear much fruit. So let's understand the first part. What does it mean to abide? Me, abide in him, he abide in me. What is it? Now the word abide itself seems to be a very passive word. The word abide simply means settle down, stay, dwell. So it seems to be very passive. He who dwells in me, he who continues in me, who, he who stays in me, abides in me. Seems like a very passive word. But what does it mean to abide in God and 
for the Lord to abide in us. Now, John, the beloved disciple, who wrote John 50, John, the Gospel of John, also wrote the three epistles of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And in this first episode, over and over again, John writes about us abiding in God and God abiding in us. Over and over again. He writes about it. I want to quickly condense it, summarize it for you and me. Uh, you can read the first episode of John and, and, and underline all this. Wherever he talks about us abiding in God and God abiding in us. But what do you see there in the first episode? I'm just summarizing it here. John says this, for instance, in 1 John 4, 15, he says, Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Christ, he abides in God and God abides in him. 1 John 4, 15. If you confess... That Jesus is the Christ. What does it mean? It means you acknowledge Jesus for who he really is. That you live a life that is acknowledging, recognizing Jesus for who he is. Then you are abiding in God and God's abiding in you. Amen? So it's not talking about just saying something, oh, Jesus is nice. So even when they curse, they curse Jesus Christ. That's not a acknowledging Jesus. That's cursing. And what he's talking about is you recognizing Jesus for who he really is. If you do that, you're abiding in him, he's abiding in you. Second thing you see in John's epistles, John says that if we walk in obedience to his commandments, he who obeys his commandments, God dwells in him and he in God. So that abiding is happening when you're obeying his Commandments. First John chapter 3, verse 6, and again in verse 24, he says this. So if you obey his commandments, you're abiding in God. God's abiding in you. The third thing you see in the epistle of John, first John, is this: if we walk in love, first John chapter 4, verse 12 and verse 16. He says, God is love, and he who walks in love dwells in God, and God dwells in him. That's powerful. If you're walking in love, he says, you are abiding in him and he's abiding in you. Just imagine this. There is such a powerful union that takes place when you and I walk in love. When you walk in love, we are abiding in him, he's abiding in us. So you choose the way of love. It makes you powerful when you walk in love. Because God dwells in you. You dwell in God. You're unstoppable. When you walk in love, that's abiding in God. And then, one more thing we see there is this, that he, he John writes, and again, this is in several places, in John 15, 7, as well as in chapter 3, 24, and chapter 4, verse 13 of 1 John, he says, he dwells in us by his word in us and by his spirit in us. So when we let the word of God and the spirit of God it just dominate every part of our being, we are abiding in God and he is abiding in the point here is this, that abiding is not a passive thing, it's an active thing. It is recognizing who Jesus is, it is walking in obedience to his word, it's walking in love, and walking yielded to his word and his spirit. When we live life like that, we are abiding in him, he's abiding in us, and we will bear much Amen? So here's the key to fruitfulness. Abide. Active. It's an active thing. You walk that way, you will be very fruitful in your life. And the last one I want to point out here and we'll pray after this is this. Back in John 15, asking is connected to expressing fruitfulness. In that whole passage, John 15 verses 1 through 8, he closes off verse 8 by saying, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so you'll be my disciples. He says, you know, God is glorified when you're very fruitful, and that's a sign that you're my disciple. So disciples, you're supposed to be fruitful. But before he closes off in verse 8, in verse 7 he says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask what you will. It'll be done for you. So in this whole teaching on being fruitful, there is this one important element that we do in addition to abiding in him. You abide in him, his words abide in you, you abide in him, he abides in you. But there's one more thing. You ask. So ask what you 
desire. Are you sure? It's there. Ask what you desire. What is it you desire? When you're abiding in him and he's abiding in you, everything you desire, it will be aligned to him. Amen? There will be nothing that you and I desire that will be out of that place of abiding in him and he in us. It will not, it will not be misaligned. There's no chance for that. That's why he could say, you ask what you desire. Because all your desire is now aligned to his. Because he's abiding in you, you're abiding in. He says, ask whatever you desire. But the thing I want to emphasize is we've got to ask. Amen. As a church, we've got to ask God. We want to see souls saved. We want to see hundreds come to faith in Christ. We want to see thousands come to faith in Christ. God, we want to see the signs, the wonders, the miracles. God, we want to see the sick healed, the, the blind eyes open, the deaf ears. Yeah, God, we want to see the book of Acts happening again through us. We've got to ask. Amen? For your own life, ask. What is it? That is going to cause an increase in fruitfulness in your life. That's personal. That's specific to you. But you've got to ask. Amen? And there's nothing wrong in asking. Because he wants to see us in a place of greater fruitfulness. He wants to see. So you ask. And he said, if you abide in me, I abide in you. You ask what you will. Our words are in you. So you ask what you will. Because what you're asking is never going to be misaligned to who he is. And he says it will be done for you. Amen. So let us ask. You begin asking for your own personal life. You know. To see increased fruitfulness. Whatever. How that is expressed for you. In your assignment. And what you're doing. You ask. And we as a church will ask, Lord, as a church, we want to be increasingly fruitful for your kingdom. So we're asking for our impact on the city. We're asking for influence in our city. We're asking for people to be saved in our city. We're asking for our nation. So let's be bold to ask for those things. Amen? God wants us to be fruitful. Call our worship team up, please. So as we look ahead to 2018, let's journey together. In a greater intimacy with the Lord and greater fruitfulness for his kingdom. And just keep this in mind that true intimacy will always produce greater fruitfulness. So the Father can be glorified. Let's rise to our feet, please. Before we close this morning, I want you to take a few moments to pray. Pray about two things. One, the word of the Lord for, for you and me, for us as a church. God. Areas that I want to see rebuilt. There are certain things I've been praying about for my own life. So God, I want those areas rebuilt. I want to see the glory of God. And I know what I was walking in. I know what was happening those days. I want to see those things back. And I want to see greater glory. I want to see more. There may be areas in your life that you'll be praying, you would like to pray about. So pray. Say, God, I want to see those things restored. I want to see those things rebuilt. I want to see those things raised up. So the foundations are there, but I want to see those things raised up. Brought glory, brought back. Second, I want, to, want you to pray about increased fruitfulness in your life. God wants you to bear more fruit. Thank God for the fruit you are bearing, but he doesn't want you to stop there. He wants to go another level. So pray about greater fruitfulness in your life, in whatever area of your life that you feel you should bear more fruit. He said, ask. Ask. There's nothing wrong. But be ready. So God, you prune. You tell me areas that need to be pruned, that need to be cut off, things that need to be cleansed, taken out in my life so that I can move to a place of greater fruitfulness. In another place, Jesus put it like this in John 12. He said, the corn of a grain of wheat, if it remains by itself, it doesn't produce. But if it falls to the ground and dies, it brings forth much fruit. That's another way to describe it. it. Falls to the ground and dies. It'll bear much fruit. So sometimes that cleaning requires dying. That pruning 
requires dying. But if you fall to the ground and die, if there's that death taking place, then there is going to be that multiplication coming. If there is that cleansing taking place, there will be that increased fruitfulness coming. Let's take a few moments before we close. I know we have passed our time, but let's do this, please, before we close.
Father, I just pray for a grace and anointing to be released on everyone here, God. To rebuild areas of our lives that may for some reason have been torn down, dismantled, brought down. Father, I pray that there will be a rebuilding, a restoring, a raising up on all foundations are bringing back to glory in our lives the Holy Spirit I pray you will do this for us you empower the rebuilding you empower Lord you undergird the raising up, the restoring the recovery, the repairing In our lives. And Father, even as we've heard in your words that you desire for, for each of us to bear more fruit. And for that also we pray for release of grace and empowering by your Spirit. That each one of us, God, will see increased fruitfulness in our lives. That we will be fruitful. We will bear more fruit much fruit that your working your life and your working in us will be made manifest people will see it let there be much increased much increase of the fruit we bear in our lives so that the father may be glorified We thank you, Lord. Before we close this morning, if there's anyone here, you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ. Maybe you're visiting. Maybe you've maybe you've come. For several You never made a decision to believe in Jesus, to let him be the Lord in your life, to be your savior. I want to give you an opportunity to do that before we close. Is anyone here? You've never received Jesus into your life, but this morning you'd like to do that. I want you to pray this prayer with me. It's not about the prayer, but it's about what Jesus does for you. The prayer is only to help you. If you've never done this before, but this morning you feel in your heart you want to do it, just pray this prayer with me, please. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. Make me a new person. And help me to live the rest of my life following you. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. If you don't mind, could you just raise your hand where you are? We want to just celebrate with you. God bless you. God bless you guys. Anybody else? Pray this prayer for the very first time. Anybody else? God bless you. God bless you. Two of them here. We have a packet for you. So if you can just receive that, please. It's our gift pack to you. There are resources in it. And uh, there are two of them. Please they just give both of them. Yeah. Of them. And anybody else, and I'm not sure if I've seen your hand up on the balcony anywhere, just make sure you put your hand up. Our greeters will come. They give you this brown bag with a card that says decision card. If you just write your name and number, just hand it back right to them. Uh, it'll help us be in touch with you. We'll tell you how to use the resources. God bless you. Let's close, please. Uh, can we have somebody else just come back right up here to collect the card from him, please? All right, let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with us always. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday afternoon and Happy New Year. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org also visit our website abcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.